Good day, subscribers. Today is episode eight of semester one, my first semester, and CS6475 final review. This is the last episode of semester one, so I hope you enjoy. If you would like to see the previous episode before watching this one, click the banner in the upper right hand corner. In the last episode, we talked about signing up for summer and fall courses. So far, I was able to get the summer course I wanted, which is CS7637 Knowledge Based AI, and I'm still on the waiting list for my fall courses. As always, I'd like to thank my subscribers out there. Today, I have a very special image for you. Here, I have exclusive source code for Windows Troubleshooting Program. As you can see, it's very effective. So, now talking about my first semester, of course you have to talk about the class I took, CS6475, Computational Photography. So, I've done a halfway review on this before, but I'll just review some of those points quickly. What is the class about? Well, it starts off talking about what cameras are, how they work, how lenses work, and how the physical components work. You do a lot of work with images, including video stabilization and working with HDR images. And you do a lot of work with image manipulation using Python, mainly using the OpenCV library. On the right side, you can actually see one of the photos that I used for my final project. For my final project, I decided to recreate a program that removes haze or mist. The image on the left is the image that was taken, and the image on the right is the image that was developed through my program. Now, looking at the class, we can see how it's broken down. So, for CS6475, at least my semester, was made up of seven homework assignments, a midterm, a final project, three notebook quizzes, a final exam, and a final portfolio and the waiting for these things can be seen on the right. The only thing to point out here is that one, assignment type one only refers to the first assignment, which was a very simple assignment of simply taking a picture and submitting it. And that was just to get everybody used to using the Canvas site and working within the class. And assignment two, which is 42% of the class, which is the largest section, consisted of homeworks that applied to the 90% rule, which I'll be talking about more later. So again, I've kind of covered this in a previous video, but just to go over it again, what are the prerequisites for this course? Well, just like for all the courses, you would expect to need to know some coding. For CS6475, Python is basically what's used throughout the whole class, with the only exception being your midterm project can be done in any language that you choose. Additionally, you'll need to have a camera. Now, I just used the camera from my smartphone, which is a Samsung Galaxy S6, and that worked perfectly fine for me. If you wanted an excuse to get a more expensive camera, this is definitely the class for you. And for a commitment, I would rank it as a medium time commitment, about 12 hours each week. When the midterm was coming and the final, that time definitely increased. And there were definitely times where it was lower, around six to eight hours a week, where it was just a simple homework assignment or one of the notebook quizzes. Now, let's take a look at the pros and the cons for the class. So for pros, first of all, the information in the class is very interesting. It's really fun to look at different photographs and then be able to manipulate them, especially because it's something that you can see right in front of you. And second, the class isn't made up of 100% programming. In other words, there's homework assignments where you deal a little bit more in the physical world, such as one of the homework assignments where we had to build a camera obscura and take pictures of our setup. For cons, one of the cons is a large time commitment. As I said before, it's probably average about 12 hours with spikes during the final and the midterm. Second, it is very difficult to get an A in the course. Um, the 90% rule, as I said before, applies to almost all homeworks, all homeworks that are type two. 
And what that rule is, is you're given an assignment and when you fill out all the parts of the assignment, if you get everything correct, you get a 90 out of 100. To gain that additional 10%, you have to do what the course calls an above and beyond. And that above and beyond consists of additional work that you come up with yourself to show how you learn the material and how you can use the material. I completed above and beyonds for each assignment, but never received the full 10%. The most I ever received was 8 out of 10. And lastly, the final is tricky. There's two problems I have with the final. First is that the final is the first test you actually take in the course. You have three notebook quizzes, which help give you some idea, but they don't give you a real idea of how the questions will be framed in the final or the way you're going to go through the information in the lectures. Lastly, who should take this course? Well, first of all, if you're somebody who's preparing for computer vision, this is definitely a great course to take. And it's actually the reason I took it. Computer vision is one of the courses that I really wanted to take. And so I saw that computational photography was a good course to get you ready for it. And second, anybody who needs to gain some experience in Python. I would consider myself a medium user of Python, meaning I definitely have a lot to learn, but I have the basic for loops and such down. This class was enough that I was able to really stretch my skills and learn a lot, but not so much that it was completely overwhelming. I was able to complete all of the homework assignments and all of the quizzes. And finally, would I take this course again? Well, overall, I would say yes. As I said, the information is very interesting and I'm not in this program just for the grade. With that said, I was able to do very well in the class. I did really well on the homeworks, uh, really well on the final project, decently well in the midterm, and not horrible on the final exam. And overall, I was able to get a pretty good grade. So it's difficult, but not impossible. If you have any additional questions on this course, remember to check out the OMS Central page. As I've said before in a previous video, this is an unofficial course reviewing website created by a Georgia Tech grad. For computational photography, last time I checked, there were 97 reviews with an average work hour of 12 hours, which is very accurate to what I had said, an average difficulty of about three, and an average rating of about four, which is very high. Below you can see even some of the average grades of who got an A, who got a B, and who got a C. I'm not sure how accurate this was for my course as I was in 2019 and I don't even see data for 2018, but maybe they'll add this soon. As always, links to OMS Central will be in the description below. So overall thoughts, the program is very well put together the class really flows with each other and builds on previous concepts as the class goes on. It is rigorous and a pretty fair time commitment, um, but the material is very interesting. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and were able to learn something. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. Thanks and subscribe.